streaming right now. It Sorry? Is, it is recording right now. It's recording right now? Yeah. yeah. Is this live broadcasting? It is not live broadcasting. No, no. But uh, the, the record will be edited by the, I think, by the main organization. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, I can just start then. Um, <coughs> all right, uh, I am uh, Ross Mallard and I'm one of uh, two uh, Wikimedians who uh, had the privilege of being sent to the London Paralympic Games in uh, 2012, in September. Um, we had, uh, it was pretty special, I think, in that uh, Wikimedia, never done this before. We were there we were able to write articles for Wikipedia and for post things for Wikinews. We had uh, we had immediate accreditation from the Australian Paralympic Committee. So what that meant was that we could go to any event, we could rock up at any time, we could uh, see and in interview. The, uh, the players, the coaches from different countries. So to start with, it says, it says here we created um, articles on all of Australia's Paralympians, all 161 of them. We uh, found uh, pictures of them. We got the uh, Australian Paralympic Committee to release photographs of all of the athletes. Some of the athletes failed to show for their pictures, but the Every athlete, every, we had an ID like this, and it had a picture of you on it. Every athlete had to submit to that for both online and on their ID. And in addition to the, uh, the picture that they show, there was a series of mug shots like this in which they were smiling, which is no good for a, an ID photograph. So, we got the Paralympic Committee to release all the smiling ones for us. So that gave us a photograph for every single one of those 161 articles. And a good quality one, so you could see the, the athletes. So here, we've got one athlete who didn't show up. And um, at the time, for whatever reason. Uh, there was uh, the Paralympic Games is very uh, big on classification. The uh, athletes have a particular disability classification. They won't be missing an arm or a leg, or so be blind, and they did to varying degrees. So everybody's got a classification. Um, the Paralympic Committee means a lot to them, and so they asked us to create articles on classification. So another 127 Wikipedia articles was created on classification. It, I was skeptical about it. I thought people would be more interested in athletes than in classifications, but of course classifications uh, applies to athletes from every country and not just from Australia. And so in the end, we got as many hits on the classification articles as we did on the athlete articles. Um, it says here that six achieved good article status. I've been sending them through good GA since then. Now it's more like 60. Um, there was uh, 60 articles in proof for Did You Know? We took articles and turned them from stubs. We multiplied them fivefold and sent them to Did You Know? The other ones, the other 101, all went through Did You Know? as they were created. Uh, 70 articles were published on Wiki News. We, uh, there was a bit of a tug of war between Wiki News and Wikipedia. The Wikipedia required us to have updates to all the events all the time. We didn't have enough. Come in. Come in. Wiki, uh, for the purpose of the Wikipedia, the people wanted all the London stats available online. Uh, straight away for the people who were back at home wanting to know wh who went, won what event. That was for every country. Uh, we were flat out, with only two of us, we were flat out for uh, doing it just for Australia. Um, we were hoping that volunteers back home would be uh, filling in the details of their countries and, and for some extent they did. The British were particularly good at it. 
they were well organized and they had everything updated straight away. But they had advantage of live television. Not every country had live television of all the events and you couldn't see it. So in, in for as a for future thing to do Wikipedia for a big sporting event like, like the Olympics or the Paralympics, you need a media accreditation and you need to be at the event at the media center is where you need to be to put in the stuff for Wikipedia. For Wiki News, you need to be at the venues. So you actually are there in front of the game as it goes on. So you can post about it, you can interview the players afterwards. There's opportunities to go down to what they call the mix zone and talk to the players. Uh, 250 images were taken. We took photographs of everything. We were not accredited as photographers. There's special places for photographers where they can take photographs. They could, uh, it's a very special ones like the uh, marathon runners run along and believe it or not, there's like a truck with a bleacher on the back of it full of photographers that's rumbling in front of them all the time. Um, I would have thought of that they wouldn't like breathing in fumes, but the, the photographers have special places and they could be right on the, on the court or on the ground, and uh, the cycling, for example, or in the middle, where they could take photographs of people from really close up. But we could only take it from where we were, uh, from the public areas, because we're not accredited as photographers, but as journalists. And anything that we did take, uh, except from outside, was subject to uh, being uh, Creative Commons non-commercial. And therefore couldn't be used on Wikipedia, but it could be used on Wiki News. Um, we interviewed various um, Paralympians. The, we did more interviews. We, did, we also interviewed officials and coaches. We did more interviews than we were able to upload. Uh, there was this problem of the time to transcribe things. So you do an interview, record it, then you have to transcribe it, upload it, have it checked. With more uh, people, of course, we'd be able to transcribe more stuff, but we'd probably generate more interviews, so that might cancel itself out. We did workshops in Queensland, so we brought people together who were interested in going, and including people, we also brought in people from the Paralympic Committee. We taught them how to update the Wikipedia. Um, I'd forgotten what a steep learning curve the markup is for someone who's never done it before. We taught them how to do that, and some of them were very active in keeping the uh, details of, of what was happening day to day up to date. But the Olymp International Olympic Committee wanted to see the Wikipedia up to date day by day, it's not running a couple of days behind, so that the medal tallies for the different countries were exactly as they were in real time. Uh, we did a uh, workshop on classification, since I didn't know anything about classification. The Paralympic Committee did the reverse and taught us how the Paralympics work and how the classification worked. Uh, we met, uh, we had organisation support. Uh, Wikimedia Australia chipped in half the money to send us there and to pay for our accommodation. Uh, the Paralympic Committee were just superb apart from the fact that they gave us their accommodation uh, the rest paid for the rest of our airfares and accommodation and they gave us that accreditation that is absolutely vital to covering an event like the Paralympics or the Olympics so because without it you just can't get into the venues you can't see things you can't get into the media center you can't get into the international broadcast center you, you all of those parts you know you, without it you can only get into the public areas that's not good enough. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation provided uh, special clothing. We got clothing. This I got off the Paralympic Committee, but we also got uh, some uh, I edit Wikipedia t-shirts and things from Wikimedia Foundation. We felt that was important. When we're walking around, we wanted people to know that we were from Wikipedia and uh, so that People will get used to the idea of, of Wikipedia journalists on at the games. Uh, Wikimedia UK gave us some merchandise and things. People wanted badges and buttons in exchange for things, so we needed them to give away. 
uh, the wiki news people we, we to get our wiki news stories when we're doing a surge of them you have to get the wiki news volunteers to uh, approve and edit and uh, our articles as quickly as possible and we got real attention um, we got the attention of the International Paralympic Committee, not the least when we started asking questions at their media conferences. So people like Sir Lord Coe and Sir Philip Craven, the head of the IPC, knew that we were there. And from what I've heard since, the IPC is interested in working with us on in the future. From Australia, our Minister for Sport, Kate Lundy, I didn't speak to her in person, I have uh, spoken to her before uh, related to breast uh, cancer charities, but she was with the, uh, the VIPs, we were with the media, we didn't speak to her, but nonetheless she got up in Parliament and praised the effort of Wikipedia at the Games. Um, various newspapers and um, TV stations thought it was worth mentioning that Wikipedia was covering it. Um, the TV and the um, Google News was picking up our news articles too, so they were linking to our news articles on Wiki News. So the Wiki News feed was feeding into Google News, so it was on the only place where people were reading the things we were writing. Um, they wanted us to tweet about things, but we, we could only cover one thing at a time. If I had my choice, what I'd like to do is to take an international team of like 10 people uh, to the Paralympics and from different different countries so we could cover all the venues simultaneously and we could talk about all the countries and we could update all the language well as many language Wikipedias as 10 people can cover. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody any group of 10 people in the world that can do all 120 Wikipedias but the big ones, uh, English, German, French, Russian, they, they should be coverable. As it was, we were concentrating on it, but we did create articles on the different languages. Um, we did uh, look at where people were, were re-doing uh, our things. We did get our articles as we printed, did them. They've been translated into other languages. We got, we, assembled, we checked out how many hits we got on Did You Know. Um, I personally think that a couple of hundred hits on Did You Know article is not very good, but a few thousand is really nice. Um, some of our articles got uh, very, very high numbers of the, like 9,000. Come on in. Is this a late name talk? Sorry? Yes, it's a late name talk? Oh. Uh, so, uh, the Did You Know article, so uh, in total 66,000 views. Um, at times, because we saved up all of the Did You Know articles for the Paralympics that were done over the previous months, I was thinking we'd have one of the eight hour slots every day totally devoted to the Paralympics. Um, by the time it got there, as people in the UK in particular were starting to get jaded of sporting events after doing the Olympics. And they didn't like our idea of doing an entire did you know where you're a day, nothing but sport. But we had 70 or so articles queued up by that time, so we had to have two or three Paralympic articles in every prep area. Um, yeah, the most popular one was Chris Bond, wheelchair rugby, yes. Um, to the, the very uh, the, the whole goalball team, Ellie Cole. The, these are these people listed here are really famous in Australia, and there are certain people who will uh, Paralympians who appear on TV commercials and things. So uh, we're, we've tried to cover their stuff. So Grace Bowman, we went out to Greenwich to see her ride. Unfortunately, she didn't do too well. The we, we, these are the people who were doing the editing. As you can see, uh, myself, I'm, I'm there, number three. Uh, the, these are uh, Laura, the other Wikipedia presence there. We, 
the other people are, are well-known volunteers, but particularly people like Tara McPhail, who's a careful Wikipedian, um, who were really pitching in to keep the Paralympic pages up to date. As usual, the top contributors do most of the work. Um, these are, as they, when at the end of a Paralympic event, the media sit in a thing called the media tributes, where you've got a bench and you can set up your laptop, you've got a, a wire connection that you can plug in. They don't, wireless is no good at an event like the Olympics or the Paralympics because the electromagnetic spectrum isn't big enough to let everybody log on at once. It's real wireless. So instead, we have wire connections that you plug in. Uh, so you could set up your laptop, you could type away while you were doing it. It was very comfortable and our seats were better than the ones that the public had, but not the best seats in the house. The Olympic family had the very best, but they were, we could also, at the end of a sporting event, you could go down to an area called the mixed zone where the uh, athletes mixed with the media. So they sort of run a media gauntlet. The athletes have the choice of talking to you or not talking to you. So it helps if you've got a personal relationship with at least some of the athletes. Uh, we didn't have enough time to build up the kind of relationship with the athletes that I have now. So it's uh, now I could stand down there, our Australian athletes would recognize me and they would, would talk to me. But fortunately, Australians are really good at talking to the media <laughs> and love talking to Greg Smith, our flag bearer, is particularly good. And uh, you just have to watch it, though. The, some of the British journalists uh, uh, told me uh, the Australians told them stories that were not true. Uh, the Greg Smith is, is really friendly, really nice guy. Um, it could be embarrassing sometimes when he would reveal details that well, some people would rather play down. Um, Michael Hartung is our deputy chef de mission. He made time. We went into the Olympic Village, into the actual Australia area, and we toured our facilities there. There were things like they put out a nice veranda and all for the athletes to sit on. We demolished that and replaced it with a cooling down area. We built, uh, taken rooms inside it and built them as TV studios so the athletes didn't have to go into the International Broadcast Centre to be interviewed for uh, things in Australia but could be interviewed right on the spot. Uh, the cooling down area meant that they didn't have to be trunked around the, the Olympic Village from place to place so they could have gone to the gym and then back. For Paralympians who may not be all that mobile and maybe in wheelchairs or maybe missing a leg, it, it, walking around the Olympic Village, which is very large, was a bit of a burden, so we tried to cut that down. But Patung made time to spend a half an hour telling us about what he was doing, what Australia was doing, and, and he was great. He's a consummate media manager. Um, we even at one point says, is there any questions we didn't ask you? He says, yes. And then he went <laughs> to answer one question of his own. Paul Bird, the head of uh, Wikimedia, uh, sorry, um, uh, sorry, put the head of uh, IPC in Oceania. And um, the, he, he was um, a wonderful guy. He's a former Australian Paralympian. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to call people former Paralympians. He was an Australian, he's an Australian Paralympian. I'm allowed to call him former. There's no such thing as former, the IPC keeps telling me. He uh, deals with those countries in Oceania, and Oceania is not a wealthy part of the world. Uh, it's got Australia, it's got New Zealand, it has a lot of small island countries that are really struggling that depend on the largesse of Australia and the IPC to be able to send athletes at all. Um, they don't have the kind of resources needed to like send a team sport like wheelchair rugby or wheelchair basketball. Um, and they couldn't always send their best athletes. They were relying on the wild card that where the IPC was handing out. So the ICC will hand out a kind of scholarship to go there and they pay for the cost of an athlete. But they were trying to balance the athletes, so a female athlete had a much better chance of getting one. 
Um, we, Paul arranged for us to interview athletes from these Oceania countries that were not, uh, didn't uh, get uh, much press. Uh, they couldn't afford to bring their own media people. Uh, we were able to interview them, put stuff up on Wiki News. That stuff was then picked up by the Google feed and by some other news agencies. Um, but places like Vanuatu, Fiji, Tonga, just a few thousand bucks makes all the difference to them as to whether they'll be able to compete at all. And so we were glad to help them out. There was another name there, Tricia Zorn. I, I was invited to go to Visa Card's presentations for the uh, Par uh, Paralympic Hall of Fame. I found Tricia Zorn there. She's a Paralympian with some staggering number of medals. Um, the Olympic Committee hadn't even kept track of all the medals she had, but she had proof of which one she had. And she uh, told us that uh, she was presenting at the swimming that night. So we went to the swimming and we interviewed her on the spot. And I transcribed the article and I uploaded it. It's just, um, the, I just wanted to show you what some of the, the, this one here is one of the articles that I wrote. This one is about the wheelchair basketball campaign. It's full of templates that we put together. I have, have not only done, I've written articles on all of them and we've improved it these two, to these uh, articles to, to GA. Um, the, many of them are relatively small because the athletes are not that old and don't have huge long careers. But, and in, partic we, in particular, we wanted to make sure that the whole team, um, so people are notable on Wikipedia, if they uh, have won a Paralympic medal but we wanted the whole team so we had to dig out the sources for everybody make sure everybody was there I went further not only did I write up all the, uh, the the wheelchair basketball campaign because I just loved that, that sport it really was I was blown away watching it um, but I then went ahead and translated uh, or wrote first I started translating articles on the Germans from the German Wikipedia then and only a couple of them had articles. So then I started creating articles on the German Wikipedia. This is one, again, good article. Um, I've dug it, had to dig out sources in German for the, to write the article with. I've written it. I, we found pictures that we took of the German players, used that to illustrate the article. The, uh, translate. I, I then, once I've written it in English, I've been retranslating them. I've been sorry, been translating them into German if they don't have a German article yet. So some one of them has a German article that's only a stub. Um, I'm going to replace that with a GA quality article on the German Wikipedia. And the idea is that a companion to my Australia wheelchair basketball, though I'll have one for the Germans as well. So the, both the two teams, I've written a template down the bottom, you can see my progress that I start with the player numbers, and I've worked my way through to number 10 at the moment. I have the material collected for numbers 11 and 13, but I haven't written the articles yet, so I have to do that when I get back. But I'm, while I'm here, I'm trying to get uh, some help from the German people to write up their articles. The, so the, the, in sum, this was really worth doing. The, we had a lot of access. The organisations in question uh, were interested in supporting our activities. We've, the, the, uh, the, uh, you, to, in order to cover an event like the Olympics or the Paralympics, you've got to be there. You can't cover it from home. The, the huge volume of information that gets created both online and on paper at the time. We put a bit of effort into 
gathering large quantities of that paper that they produced and we put it in a couple of boxes and we got, uh, the, there were several container loads of equipment that our Australian <laughs> Paralympic Committee was shipping back to Australia. We were able to get some space in one of those to put our two boxes of, of paper in. The British have already taken down the website for the <laughs> London uh, 2012 Olympics. Oh. Wow. Um, so it's gone. The, fortunately, the Wayback Machine has preserved the pages, but most of them, uh, nearly all of them, I'm hoping. Um, but uh, I just seen at the, at the start of July, they pulled the flag. So Beijing's gone, and now London's gone. So what will remain will be what's on the Wikipedia. So in, people, if you're familiar with the Wayback Machine, you know that if you know the URL, you can find stuff. If you don't know the URL, it's hard to search. No. So the, what will, people will do when they are looking for information on the 2012 Paralympics, they're gonna come back to our articles again. So that's what's going to survive. Uh, so the, the information that we, we gathered, things like every team had a media handbook with bios of the articles and details of that team. That the American one was on a thumb drive. Uh, other team, every other team had theirs on paper. We went round to each team and we gathered a copy of it. And those the uh, media guides have been deposited in the Sports Information Centre in Canberra, uh, where people can in future will be, be able to use them in researching from previous games. We found that the uh, media guides from Atlanta and London and Athens have been the most important resources in, in gathering stuff on those old games. The websites are frustrating in that the they link, link rock uh, erodes away the old sites. So, what what I'd like to be able to do, and what I found when I got here was that the Germans were also working on this idea of sending an international team to the next Paralympics. If we've got ten people, we can cover all the venues. We can update the Wikipedia as the games go progress. We can. Uh, report on everything for Wiki News, and we can interview people, and we can translate articles at least into the most common languages. But uh, you've got to get accreditation, and it seems like the Germans were able to get accreditation, but didn't have the sources of money. So if oh. the two of us could have got together uh, back at the time before the deadline started to expire. We, we could have supplied them with the money that was needed to run the thing, but we didn't have the accreditations. Uh, that the Germans are still optimistic about Rio in that a German is going to be appointed to be the head of, of the uh, IPC, I believe. And so they believe they've got a, a conduit to getting accreditation, but slipping up as we have in Sochi is, damaged our chances of being able to reproduce things for real. So thank you. Has anyone got any questions? Uh, uh, yeah, Chris. I've got a question about the licensing. I remember yes. there was a big deal before you guys went to the Paralympics about how the Olympics, Par Olympics and Paralympics did not allow their image, images taken to be licensed freely. They require the uh, 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 Creative Commons NC license. So. You couldn't, uh, you, you could, anything you had taken from anywhere that was official had to be done under that license, so it was non commercial. And under Wikipedia's uh, rules, a free license is not free, so you, you can't use non commercial. So uh, if we took a, and one of the reasons why we chose to send journalists instead of photographers was that. Uh, the photographers would generate a pile of photographs that we couldn't use on the Wikipedia. We could use on Wiki News. We use we have some great photos of things like uh, Prince Harry meeting um, uh, Madison.
Gaius and Eliot, uh, but we can't use those on Wikipedia. Um, I've I tried with this article to you these. Um, I, for me, I, I can tell that this is taken from a public area. The public was sitting at either end of the basketball. Um, we were sitting off to this side. And um, so but the public was able to take a photo and then upload it. But we could, because oh. of our special access, we had to release them as non-commercial. And I tried to put one of them on this, this page of something that there was no photos of and it got deleted. I couldn't prove that it was um, important enough under NFCC 8 <laughs> to uh, warrant being able to, uh, to use it under fair use. And it was particularly galling having to fill in stuff they're saying that about the, uh, we'll reduce it in size to reduce the commercial impact on a photograph that has no commercial use. It's <laughs> silly. Uh, uh, but that was a controversy before it started and we, we weren't able to resolve that and that'll happen again it, uh, when we uh, we'll take photographs and they will be non-commercial and the IPC is not going to change its rules. Um, the the non-free content criterion are generally speaking done for things you've taken that aren't by you. Should there be a special version of the non-free content criterion for people for images like that where you're required to license them in one way, but they're your images entirely? That's a great idea. I mean, just um, create the um, special rules for, for, these situa for these really weird situations. Yeah, it'd be, it, it, that'd be really good. Um, but I couldn't, like I can't, but people say, well, you took the photo, why don't you just release it under a different license? Because I've already agreed with the IPC yeah, that I wouldn't do that. And I don't want to break my agreement with them uh, because then that would imperil our chances of getting to the, the next games. Contract law. Yeah. So that, it's, that's, uh, but just, just from the Wikipedia, the, the ability to, uh, be at the media center and update things, but also to gather materials. For example, the if, if there's no media at, at, at a particular game, um, the uh, the Paralympic Broadcasting System, which is was people from British TV channels have been assembled together for the purpose. They would go. They would uh, take photographs and things of of a game. So if it's between two obscure countries and there wasn't a lot of interest for, on a sport, which there wasn't a lot of interest, it was possible that there was no media there from anywhere, they would be there. So every event would be covered. They would also interview the players and get a sound bite. And they had priority over us for talking to players. And they would put those sound bites out on a sheet, which were given to the media for the use. Now, those sound bites were never uploaded to the web pages, but we were able to gather copies of them. And the, this article here makes use of those, uh, those quotes that people provided. So um, I think it was really good. Back to the images. Uh, did you guys ultimately get a chance to talk to the players off out of the official areas, or have you been able to negotiate that? Um, the, yes, we did. Um, the players live in a kind of bubble and they're protected from the media and from the public. They have their own village and you needed a special pass to get in and my media pass, it was not good enough to visit them. The Australia, we, each country had only a certain number of passes and Australia was using its passes to rotate support staff through on an eight hour shift basis. Oh. So physiotherapists, TV cameramen, uh, repairmen and so on uh, were being rotated through. And so we were using all, all our passes for this purpose. So I could, but we were given access to the Olympic Village by the um, Oceania countries. But Vanuatu in particular, it had no media, so and yet it had a couple of media passes, so they gave us a pass so we could go in. 
when we were in there, we were sensitive about not interrupting the athletes in their Mm. So unless one of the athletes came over and spoke to us, and a couple of them did, we didn't mm. approach them or anything like that. Occasionally we would see an athlete outside the village, mm. um, in the shopping mall that was adjacent to the Olympic Village, and we would speak to them there the, uh, sometimes. Uh, and again, it was purely up to the athlete, we didn't want to interrupt anybody or, uh, you know, uh, muscle in on, on things. Um, we didn't want to, uh, so for example, the, the basketball team, all their supporting group, and nice to have a photo, but I cannot delete it, but their supporters all had these yellow shirts so that the basketball players could look up into the crowd and see this yellow square uh. that was their family and friends. <laughs> and so, they, like many of the wheelchair basketball players had never in their lives played before this many people. There was the um, North Greenwich Arena was packed to the rafters, literally to the rafters, where you look up and you couldn't see the top rows of seats because they were in the darkness up above. There was, the whole place was sold out. There was, uh, I believe, 27,000 people or more in that arena just to see the basketball. Um, it was would have been nearly as many as to watch the finals of the Olympic basketball and I say that because it's the same arena and the only difference, and both were sold out, and the only difference was that one row of seats had been removed to make more room for people in wheelchairs. Mm. Um, so it, it was huge and it's a great sport and it had great TV coverage back in Australia and we were really proud to be there mm. and we knew the, and I, I know the athletes much better now. If I showed up there in the mixed zone now, the athletes would come straight over to oh, us. And one of the things we have with Wikimedia is that I am following <laughs> these athletes. They know me. The, uh, the TV people who will come in just for the games in Rio, um, they won't know the athletes like mm. we do. Now, obviously, people would like to get their face on them the ABC, you know, yeah. but for when it comes to just the journalists, we'll get the interviews before mm. the other people do. Mm. Yeah, uh, where, where are you from? No, I'm from Russia. Oh, excellent. Uh, first of all, thanks for all the job. It's been yeah. just amazing. Uh, you said that you created articles about all uh, participants from Australia. Yes. Uh, 161 of them. Uh, and uh, how many of them uh, get uh, medals? No. That's a good question. And uh, we, 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 they, they did very well. Um, some, somewhere here there will be the team. There we go. 32 um, gold medals. Uh, and uh, any medals? Any medals? Uh, 85 medals total. So about so, half? Uh, yes. uh, yeah, uh, some, some athletes of course got more than one medal. Ah, so yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, so the, team, the team objective, according to um, uh, Michael Hartung, the deputy, the deputy chef de mission, he told us that our national objective was to come fifth. And there was a bit of debate over what that meant in terms of gold medals or total medals. And in both of them, it was not going to be easy for a country as small as Australia to um, uh, to make it. We but uh, we are up against the U.S. for one of those tallies and Ukraine for another to get in that position. And we just squeaked by, and we got fifth in both of them. And then they officially declared the games to be a huge success. <laughs> And they went so far as to, um, there was a lot of things amongst not just the officials, but against Australians visiting in London and as to whether London was better than Sydney. And they were, British journalists were constantly interviewing people saying, do you think, you're from Australia, do you think it's better than Sydney? And the Australian would say, oh, well, you know, there's some good <laughs> things. <laughs> And only at the very end of the thing, uh, Michael Hartung finally said, 
it was better than Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we did really well. The team did really well. And yeah. there was some very, uh, the, these are the top performances here. That like, mm, this one here, this article is Madison Elliott. She's the youngest female uh, athlete you know, on our team. Um, she slashed several seconds off her time. <laughs> I was there at the swimming, and it's good to hear the comments also from the other countries where the Americans say she can't slash seconds off a swimming off her best time. And you're saying, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> most athletes can't, but a 13 year old can. Uh. 13 year olds, you don't know how good they are. <laughs> and they can really surprise you on the night, which is what Madison did. She also, complicated life immensely for the officials by presenting a toy to Prince Harry oh. and then we had to go through all the uh, diplomatic thing of, of presenting things to the royal family <laughs> and eventually there was a ceremony where Lord Coe uh, presented, uh, we, we presented Lord Coe with the toy and, and he presented uh, uh, Jason Elwig, our chef with a uh, Mandeville, um, you know, one of those, uh, the mascot of the Paralympic Games, a little toy one that, so it was an exchange of toys. And not only did I write it up for Wiki News, but I've written up the incident here for the Wikipedia, so people, and I've got the sources and things for that. Sorry, this is all. Sorry, my question was, uh, uh, are you sure that uh, all participants, uh, even without medals, are still notable for Wikipedia? Uh, only the, technically speaking, only the participants who have medals are yes. notable. Uh, at the Olympic, any Olympian is notable, but a Paralympian is only notable if they win a medal, like automatically notable. Mm -hmm. But if we can... Uh, General notability. Yeah, we, so we have to go through GNG to, to build up an article sufficiently large and impressive that we say, yeah, this is, is enough. And fortunately... So it's covered enough sources, basically? GNG, basically. Yes, yeah, so it covered in enough reliable sources to build a, a proper yeah. article. So you have found some... enough sources for any participant in, or from Australia? Yes, mm. yes we did. The Paralympic Committee wanted us to substitute the Wikipedia for their own pages. <laughs> and they said, why have two sets of bios of all the athletes? Why don't we just have the one? We'll just put, we will just upload uh, the bios to the Wikipedia and we'll write the Wikipedia article ourselves. And we're saying, uh, you know, there's a thing we have about original research and you, that's exactly what you're going to be doing. Um, what we wanted them to do is to upload it to their own page and then we'll take all the facts off their page yeah, and put it onto. <laughs> we were talking about a kind of wiki data project whereby they provided data, raw data, and we could use that to generate mm. articles. But we couldn't, we haven't yet figured out a way to let them just uh, write the Wikipedia articles themselves. But that's a problem. But, but uh, had we run into some aggressive person who wanted to delete things, we could have... I suppose they could. could. Right, just um, write, the bi write, the bio on write the bio on their site as a Wikipedia article and CC license it so it be caught ported over. Mm. Yeah, we could do that, I thought. Yeah, it's just that when it came over, the source would be to their article. See, so we yeah. need to have them as a source somehow. Yeah. Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have a presentation to make. Can I take this? Yes, okay. yes, your turn. Thank you. So, where do I plug it in? Do I, since it's just a few 